Hey guys, today is Friday, August 7th. The time is 3.50 p.m. and the temperature is 24 degrees Celsius. I'm currently walking south on Lansdowne Avenue through the Little Portugal neighborhood. The plan for this walk is to make a left turn onto Dundas Street West. We're just coming up just ahead here. And I'll walk through the Little Portugal neighborhood and then head past Ossington Avenue over to Bathurst Street. The entire walk should be somewhere around three kilometers. This here is College Street. College Street runs east to west, parallel to Dundas Street, which we'll be walking across. That's where the street begins. And you can take that west through the northern part of the Little Portugal neighborhood and then through Little Italy and into downtown. And then College Street comes to an end at Young Street, where if you continue forward onto it, it'll become Carlton Street. So this here is Dundas Street West. Just behind me to the east are the rail tracks that pass under Dundas and the West Toronto Rail Path, which I went on a bike ride through last weekend. had an American plate too. Interesting. So this is Dundas Street West. It's primarily retail along this portion through Little Portugal. Although Little Portugal itself is primarily a residential neighborhood. It kind of forms a wedge shape. As I mentioned, it starts at College Street to the north. And to the south, it goes just a little south past Queen Street West. But the bulk of it, at least in terms of where all the retail is, is along Dundas Street and College Street, just to the north of here. There's a rare, almost old-timey style gas bar. That right there would be St. Helens Church. I think I saw that over 50% of the residents in this neighborhood do identify as being Portuguese. Although lately there's been an influx of those with Brazilian heritage in this neighborhood, as well as Chinese and Vietnamese. And that's reflected in a lot of the new cuisine choices that have popped up. This area is also known as Brockton Village. It was the former town of Brockton.
but it was annexed into the city of Toronto back in 1884. And coming up should be Brockton Avenue, presumably named after the same source as Brockton Village. There's a store called Brockton Cyclery. And this building here on the left is the former town hall of Brockton. one of the few historically significant buildings we'll be walking by. That building dates back to 1882. It certainly looks like it's seen some better days. We are in stage three of the coronavirus pandemic reopening, but there still seems to be a preference for eating outside, which is understandable. A lot of these sidewalk patios that popped up during stage two have stuck around. This is a pop-up location for Bird Box Chicken, coming soon. Looks like that's in a former movie theater building. There's a lot of Portuguese bakeries and restaurants in this area, of course. Although I can't say I've been down here to dine too often. I can only think of a few that I've been to. There is a Canadian restaurant called Antler. Which I think should be just up here on the north side of the street. They're known for serving a lot of Canadian grown cuisine, including meats and their vegetable dishes. So this area is to the west of downtown, and I'm currently walking east, heading into the city, or at least into the downtown part of the city. Of course, we're already in the city. And it became known as Little Portugal as throughout the 50s, 60s, and 70s. A lot of Portuguese immigrants settled here, which is often the case with a lot of Toronto's neighborhoods. There's similar stories for Greektown and Roncesvilles, 
which is primarily a Polish neighborhood, as well as, of course, Chinatown and Koreatown. But what happens in time, Toronto's so diverse, they eventually start to take on a more diverse feeling on the streets. And that's sort of how we end up with this very interesting mix of neighborhoods that we currently have. So this is Dufferin Street. Just to the north at Bloor Street is Dufferin Station on line two of the subway. And you can take this south down to the Exhibition Place grounds. Dufferin Mall is also just to the north of here. And I think I've spotted Antler. I've known some people that have gone there and they had really good things to say about it. I haven't had a chance to eat there yet. Looks like they're set up for Street View Patio Dining. And there's the Dundas West location of Sukhothai. They feature a northern Thai dish called Khao Soy, which is particularly good. I've never been to this location. They have another one on Wellington Street, just across from Berksy Park. You may have seen some videos from Thailand before on this channel. It's one of my favorite countries to visit, and I was hoping that I could go there this year in November or December, but that's looking less and less likely at this point. But if you are in Toronto and you're looking for something a little different, I would definitely look up Sukhothai and that cow soy dish. It is quite good, if not very expensive for a dish that costs about $2 in its own country. But that's just kind of the reality of a lot of that food that you get here. Same with Vietnamese soup. I would say like... And one thing I forgot to look out for as we passed Dundas, it's just striking me now, is a bar called The Lockhart. It's kind of a Harry Potter themed bar. I'm not really into that, but it would have been nice if I remembered to check it out. I guess that gives me something to look at on the next time I come through here.
There was a burger restaurant I've been to here called the Extra Burger that was quite good. Let's see if I can catch that. I think it's around Dover Court. And I haven't really noticed many streetcars passing through here. This is one of the busier streetcar lines. This is Liskar Street. You can take this. Maybe not. I thought you could take it down to Liberty Village. I might be thinking of a different Liskar. This area has a bit of a partially gentrified feel to it. There's still a lot of mom and pa type stores and not so many chain stores. So the streetcar that you'd normally be seeing running back and forth along these tracks is the 505 Dundas streetcar. This looks like some kind of nightclub. And for a period of about two years, the streetcars weren't running on Dundas. I think going back to February 2018, up until earlier this year, sometime around April, they reappeared. They reallocated the streetcars to meet demand on other lines and had buses running on Dundas. They also implemented some track upgrades here. There's people waiting at that stop for them, so they must still be running. And I believe this is Extra Burger right here, the place I talked about earlier. Although it doesn't seem to be open anymore. This store is pretty interesting, the Unboxed Market. It's a waste-free grocery store. It's a pretty interesting concept. And that's a big, nice patio off the street, just enough to not be sucking down exhaust fumes which is one of the main concerns with a lot of these sidewalk patios. And there's a lineup at the LCBO, the provincially run liquor store. There's a capacity limit inside those stores being enforced. It's also pretty common for them to be quite busy on a Friday heading into a weekend. That is a former beer store. I believe it was open the last time I walked through here. Not get in the way of any cyclists.
So depending on who you ask, we've either just left Little Portugal or we're about to as we get past Ossington Avenue just up ahead. And there it is, spotted in the wild in its native habitat, the 505 Dundas streetcar. So this area right here has become quite trendy in recent years. It's part of the Dundas West, Ossington, West Queen West neighborhood with Queen West being the major street to the south of here. I think I missed it, but there's a bar called The Get Well, which is rather well known in this area just behind me. And just here on the right is the Communist Daughter, which is well known for its sign, which says Nazareth snack bar on it, which we can't get a look at. Let's see if I can cross over to the north here. So this is Ossington Avenue. You can take this south. That's one of the very popular neighborhoods in the city, just south of here, down the Queen Street. I will for sure be back to record a narrated walk down there. It's a lot of interesting restaurants and boutiques and craft breweries. And places to drink, of course. And this right here, the Lakeview Restaurant, has a very interesting story to it. If you've seen the 1988 Tom Cruise movie, Cocktail. They filmed some scenes in there for that movie. That's one way to configure your sports bar. European soccer is quite popular around this time, especially throughout the weekend. There's a lot of big games on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And I think most of the leagues have resumed over there. There's a bar in the neighborhood where I live, the Rosen Crown, up at Young and Eglinton, that's usually very full of EPL fans on the weekday mornings. Going back to that Lakeview restaurant I walked by where they filmed uh, scenes from Cocktail. I made a list of all the movies that had been filmed there, or at least scenes that have been filmed there. Let me see if I can pull that out. I normally just try to rattle things off the top of my head when I do these walks, but this isn't something I could pull off. So, Cocktail, Harrison Bergeron, The Boondock Saints, Hairspray, Max Payne, A Raisin in the Sun, Take This Waltz, The Samaritan, Somopolis, which was directed by David Cronenberg, and The Shape of Water, which is a Guillermo del Toro movie, who sounds notable, but I couldn't tell you who he is or what he's done.
sounded like someone was listening to Bieber there. So this is the northern end of Trinity Bellwoods Park. It's probably the most popular and well-known park in the downtown Toronto area. It's just a little west of downtown. It runs from Dundas Street, which run down to Queen Street West. Early in the spring, you can catch the cherry blossoms in bloom here. It's the former site of a college which was later rolled into the University of Toronto. There's some softball fields, tennis courts. It's got a little basin in it where you can go tobogganing in the winter. It's also recently been well known during stage one of the pandemic for a well-known COVID incident where there was significant overcrowding and zero social distancing going on. And that kind of made the news. And the next day, the police were out with a pretty heavy presence or presence in the park. And that was sort of the end of that. And they painted distancing circles for people to keep their distance from one another. Let's cross back over to the north side here. There's another 505. That streetcar will run to where Dundas curls up north and meets Dundas or uh, Bloor Street. That's where it terminates at Dundas West Subway Station. And I think it runs east over to Broadview Avenue where it'll turn north and head up to Broadview Station. So it forms kind of an elongated U shape. There's a cyclist having a beef with a car. The struggle is real in this city. And as bad as the drivers are, it's often just as often the cyclist's fault. Cyclists are entitled to take the lane and cars do have to allow a full two meters or they shouldn't pass. So it's a very common conflict. I'm willing to bet that's what happened there. She probably came well within that two meter space of him and he took exception to that. And perhaps rightfully so. Although there are times as a cyclist where you put yourself in that position or if you're approaching a red light and you decide to squeeze down the right to get to the front of the line, you've yourself encroached in that position, so you can't really point the finger at a motorist if that's what in fact happened.
was an old church. St. Agnes. So we're getting close to where I was planning on wrapping up this walk at Bathurst Street. We're well out of the little Portugal neighborhood. A lot of the bars and drinking established do or establishments do continue on this way towards Bathurst. And if I were to continue traveling straight through Bathurst Street, that'll take us through Chinatown. Seems to be some kind of boutique craft shop that has just reopened. There's one of the numerous cannabis stores that have sprouted up over the last year or so. Seems to be a fair number of vacant storefronts along this area. And maybe it's just the time of day, but the streetcar service doesn't seem to be all that frequent. There's the Lucky Strike Bar. I've been there more than just a few times. We're almost in downtown at this point. This is Euclid Avenue. So you can take this north all the way up to the annex. Here is Tilt Arcade Bar. You can pay a cover fee to enter and play all the arcade games that you want there. They usually have an old Nintendo set up as well. And some foosball tables and things like that. It's a pretty fun night out. 
That's not the original location. They're originally up in the annex. But that building got sold and Tilt actually had a clause in their lease that allowed them to buy out the location if the landlord chose to sell it and it ended up being a legal battle. And it looks like they got the losing end of that as they had to relocate down here. And they've opened up a second location since then in Greektown called Z80, which I've walked by and talked about in some prior videos. It's a really neat concept, pretty fun night out. It's not expensive at all. And they have an excellent selection of beers. I remember seeing a Drake Ovo or OVO. I don't know how you say it. But they had a store on the south side of the street, but I'm not sure exactly where it is or if it's there anymore. So I apologize if I missed it. It's one more thing to try to catch on the next time through here. guy eating the ice cream looks like kind of like Hank Scorpio but I think it's the Club Kabosh guy from the World Trade Center episode of The Simpsons when they go to New York. I wonder if that place sells crab juice. And this here is Bathurst Street. That McDonald's, I think, has the last remaining drive through in downtown Toronto. I might be wrong on that, but I, I can't recall seeing any other restaurants with a drive through in the city. And there is a COVID-19 assessment center with a lineup of people waiting to get in. I think that's five straight days now. The city of Toronto has reported less than 100 new cases. And the city of Toronto was somewhere around 10 new cases. So we're at the point now where there's more recoveries than positive tests. Things are definitely improving. There's a look at the drive-through. Of course, common belief is all it takes is one slip up for there to be an outbreak and to sort of undo a lot of the progress we've made. So I think we'll see these stage three measures for quite a while, as well as the mandatory mask and face covering health order remain in effect. So I could continue on west here But I think that'll be a walk for another day. Yes. I was going to catch the bus up to Bathurst Station. It would normally be a streetcar, but due to construction on the street, it's currently a bus that's servicing Bathurst. Looks like we've got a tent city in there, which has been a very common sight since COVID has become a thing.
I was going to walk as far as the next bus stop and wait there. I love you, but you're wrong. But at this point, it's probably best just to head back up and wait for the bus there. So I'll end the video here. Thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. There are links to Instagram and Patreon in the description if you're interested. All right, I'll catch you in the next one.